Okay, so, um, right, um, ouch, 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 ouch. It's actually not so bad. Not so bad? Nah. Okay. Not really, I don't feel anything. It's okay. Okay, I'm not going to be here for very long. I'm just going to um, <laughs> answer really quick um, for anyone that doesn't comprehend what I'm talking about. Um, I, re I went live two times this week because I was absolutely furious. Okay, so don't take this as I'm back on YouTube. Absolutely not. I'm not. Like, just chill. I just felt an absolute need to show my absolute disappointment and disgust with Bullhorn Betty. Period. All right? That's what I'm going to say. No, I'm, I'm in another place, Tennessee... If you, if you can't find your way over to like Facebook or whatever, I, I'm sorry, I can't help you. Um, I really like what I'm doing, and my lives and my topics have actually been really interesting lately. <laughs> um, I, I was just telling my Patreons right now why things happening... Why is Marissa saying this now? Why is Marissa telling us these things now? Well, I don't know if you've ever heard um, of the saying, quote, in lieu of new events or, or developing, like things, listen, things change, okay? I personally did not expect Bullhorn Betty to befriend the people that were responsible for a baby that we were protesting for. You know, there was a time in the very beginning where she was setting up her camera and she said to me, and she said it pretty low and it was between us, and she said, you know what, Marissa, I really should have listened to you. Because we had not spoken for like a year. I don't even know. I don't even know how long it was. But just thinking about it now, I have a reason to be pissed off and disappointed at her. And it's not until you really start, like when you're away from this place, a lot of things start connecting as far as dots go. And I started to tell my Patreon, like when Bullhorn Betty left me in the middle of the night and she can say all she wants. Well, we had a really long drive. Bullhorn Betty, just remember, you were in the rental car that I paid for the gas that I paid for the Airbnb that I paid for the food that I supplied for you in order to help you and your people, your team prosper. Okay. The first time was when I had that one guy come out to our hotel and I spoke to him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was a reporter. Does anybody remember what Bullhorn Betty did and said? Does anybody remember what she told the local media? She said, well, he's on the ground. We work alongside with law enforcement. And I'm sitting there going, what did she just say? The fact of the matter is, is we went 
to the county police. And there was like three or four officers, detectives that sat and talked to us. And they knew we were recording, blah, 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 blah. We don't work. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, I never worked alongside law enforcement. Although I was quite shocked and relieved that when we went to go protest CPS, that the state police were there waiting for us. And Betty still had a chip on her shoulder. Yeah, because she wanted to get smart with me outside of the church. Betty, with her undercover pens, don't deny it, Betty, right? What did you do to that woman, Aya? You took advantage of a disabled woman, one of my Patreons, that was very giving. You, you made tons of money off of my people. And her children wanted to sue you for taking advantage of all the equipment that was sent to you that she bought. I had no idea what was going on. But I got blamed for that, right? No. Well, I'm Betty. I don't know if anybody remembers this, but I was the first one to arrive in Knoxville, Tennessee. I'm sorry, but I just did not want to stay in a hotel in Kings... What the hell is that town where Summer lived with the town over? I just didn't want to be that close to them after seeing how dirty and disgusting the wells really were. So I didn't get to actually finish my story yesterday. Bullhorn Betty, Bullhorn Betty actually, actually, took her camera, went live, goes outside. Oh, you guys, look at, look at this, look at this. Look at this great Airbnb we're staying at. Okay, so there's no curtains on the windows. Oh, look at how beautiful it is, oh, blah, blah, blah. We all have our own rooms. Uh, anybody remember that? Well, guess what? The next couple of nights, we had people walking by. They had someone out there that looked like they were homeless. I guess it was Olivia that said something, said, I really think that this person that's sitting on the ground is recording us from across in front of a building. And <laughs> I go, that Bullhorn Betty said some shit like, Oh, well, maybe, maybe they're just homeless. I go, oh, with a cell phone recording us? I said, that makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. Sorry. So I went out there, large and in charge. Hey, what do you want? Oh, nothing. I'm just homeless. Yeah? Go take a hike. And they got up and ran away. Then there was another girl that walked by. I went out there again. Hey, what are you doing? Oh, nothing. I'm just walking. Yeah? Go take off. We get back one night, and there was a bag. There was a bag, people, hanging on our door with heat warmers for our hands or something. No, no, nothing. And I told them, I said, yeah, this is in an effort to kind of freak us out because everybody's watching. She goes, oh, well, you showed them the inside of the... Uh, the, the Airbnb. I didn't show them the outside. Showed them a little bit. I didn't take them on a world tour. So anyway, check this out. Somebody reaches out to the Airbnb management and tells me, tells me legit that day, oh, somebody reported you for vaping in the Airbnb. And as you know, there's a charge for $150. And I said, I definitely don't vape. And they said, oh, they sent me a video. And I go, 
okay, hold on. I said, you're telling me somebody? I said, call me. And the guy calls me up and says, yeah, we're just the property managers. Betty's like, oh, just tell them it's a water vape. It's a water vape. It's a water vape. And it turns out the guy was just like, I just think that it's really freaky that somebody would record you guys. And anyway, the guy had known the Summer Wells story. And I told him, listen, this is what's going on. This is what we're doing here. I said, and, you know, I have a safety concern of uh, this um, Airbnb because there are no curtains on the downstairs windows. And he said, you know what, I understand. And I said, so I'll just tell my friends about, you know, the vape. I said, don't worry. And I said, am I, am I going to get charged $150? And he goes, no, I'm not going to charge you $150. He goes, I understand your concerns. I said, don't worry about it. Everything was fine. But no, she didn't care for the rules, didn't care for our safety, put us in an awkward position. And I thought that that was a bit careless. And hey, what, I mean, what is, what is it to her for any sort of fees, right? What, right? She wasn't pitching in. All she had to do, all she had to do was just show up and take that opportunity. Oh, look at this. I got all these people sending me all, all this stuff that I need. Oh, my God. All this stuff that I need on my wish list. Uh, I'm going to get this. I'm going to get that. Oh, my God. Well, guess what? These were my Patreons. These were my followers. That's why she got it in her head that she was just going to push me out of the way. Right? That was her idea. And I can only speculate that that was her idea at the time. But on that trip, and I'm not going to leave anything out. Because remember, I know these people. I know all of them. I'm not looking at comments. So, please. Um... She's the one that got in touch with Dudley Jan. Dudley Jan was willing to talk to us. It was actually weeks, two weeks prior, I think. I think, I don't know. I guess we'll need a fact checker to, to uh, put it all together. Um, but Don Wells was on my live talking to me and said, oh no, you gotta, you gotta look at, Dudley Chan, you got to look at the crack houses. You got to look at the abandoned places for summer. Dudley Chan, huh? So, Bullhorn Betty deals with Dudley Chan and his wife at the time was like, I insist on this one sort of sushi restaurant place. And they had some loud music and you know, Betty and Olivia recorded. I barely recorded anything. I, ha I didn't have an interview prepared. I just thought Don was full of it. In my, in my brain, I'm thinking, you know what? This is a big waste of time. So he says, tomorrow, I know we're Don Wells is going to be. This is what really happened. So she says to all of us, okay, you guys, we all have to be on the same page here. Okay, gotcha. Fine. Okay, we can't be telling anything. We can't be releasing anything. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. I didn't have an old exclusive interview with Dudley Jan. He seemed like a decent guy. I wasn't interested in his wife. I wasn't interested in the restaurant. I was more interested with the fact that my hair was frizzy. And the energy that it took to actually physically look for summer in these 
crack houses, which we did not go to. I refuse. But we did look. We were down by road tracks. You probably didn't see any of that stuff. But we really did look, even when stuff wasn't even shown. Dudley Jan says, um, I'll take you guys in to, to Don's work site tomorrow, but it's got to be like totally, you know, you can't say it's me, blah, 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 blah. And I mean, Betty was down our throat. Let's go, guys. Wake up, everybody. We're burning light. Let's go. Blah, blah, blah. We're burning light. So anyway, Jonathan Lee Riches is in his glories as we're driving back to Rogersville. Or wherever the hell. The town next to Rogersville. And he's driving... And grabbing my shoulder, my arm, pushing me and saying, Molly, Molly, come on, I need you to get excited. We're going to see Don, we're going to see Don, we're going to see Don. And I was just like, "Mm -hmm mm-hmm. Because I was used to Don standing us up. I wasn't expecting to run after him and lose my ever-loving mind, trust me. Trust me, that was an epic moment. That was not planned. But guess what? Guess what Betty had done? <laughs> she was recording herself. Getting out of the car and thanking Dudley Ajan. Thank you, Dudley. And his yellow SUV is in the frame. So she totally... Let the whole world know that it was Dudley that ratted Don and Candace out. And I'm like, oh my God. Now this is the one with the strategy here. All right? Okay, so when we get there, thank you. So when we get there, (laughs) I start running because it was my first thing to do. My first thing to do is just run after that motherfucker. I don't blame him for being scared. I would have been scared too. <laughs> Candace is shaking. I don't know. All of a sudden, badass little bullhorn Betty isn't so badass anymore. Who was the only one mouthing off to Don and Candace? I'll tell you who it was. It was me. I gave him a piece of my mind. The cop told me, don't, don't, don't do it again. We already gave you a warning. Don't trespass. Don gets fired for the day. Don's pissed off. You know what? I don't care about you, Don. I think you're a disgusting pig. And for every person that ever gave Candace lie I can't have for her birthday <laughs> what who are you who are you I'm gonna assume that you are a complete disgusting bottom feeder people are known to be predators you support that if you were sitting there Wishing Candace a happy birthday. Dropping her cash up. Hey, she needs cigs. She needs some whiskey. You're disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. I don't want to know you. And to be honest, after Quentin Zyman, I was completely burnt out. I was like... I'm surrounded by junkies. And I had to take a moment of introspect. You know, you have two shoulders. You have your right shoulder with the angel on it, and you have your left with the devil. And it gives you choices, right? So here I am thinking that in the world, everybody is making a 50-50 decision 
on who they are and why they make the certain choices that they do. Yeah. And now I see the world much differently. It's become an 80-20. I think that... I'm going to do the Chanel banana. It's in my purse. Um, I don't want to do the... Uh, I don't want to do the um, Louboutin. It's too much. I'm going to do the... Uh, um, uh, um, yeah, I just think that a lot of people are making... And, and I'm not just saying people on this platform. I'm just saying all across all platforms, across the country, across the world, that it just seems like there's just more bad people in the world making really bad decisions. And you know how I feel about bad decision makers. Don't like them. And that's my opinion. I'm watching people make repeatedly bad decisions all the time, try to, try to give them a little, little bit of a free advice, simple advice. It's not good enough. Nothing's ever good enough. Here's the banana. Here you go. It's so pretty. I lost the cap here. Okay. So that's what I struggled with. And that's why I haven't really talked about any cases. But yeah, why... why are we bringing up all this stuff now? Well, in lieu of new evidence, in lieu of recent happenings, I was hoping that uh, a lot of you would use some common sense and know that sometimes things change. I actually haven't talked about Bullhorn Betty until I was messaging her saying, dude, what are you doing putting my name in your lawsuit I know nothing about? I didn't follow it. I disagreed. I was like, this is stupid. You're not, you know, only you, she should be smart enough to know only sue people that have serious money. Or if you're going to sue them, you got to have a solid case and you better win it on your own and then garnish their wages. When you're dealing with junkies like this, they don't have money. So with a monetized channel, you can get their wages garnished. She don't listen. She says, well, when I get sanctioned, are you going to pay my fines? You're not Donald Trump. You're not going to get sanctioned, woman. You're not that important. Nor is this. You're wasting court's time. You're wasting people's money. This is ridiculous. So, yeah, when people want to talk about, well, this is all happening now. Well, because people's true colors are coming out. And I'm sorry. I just don't like sticking around for it. You know what I'm saying? So, um, anyway, I am, let me just say hi to a couple people. Tona, so glad you called out that weirdo stalker, MM. Can't believe she was live streaming herself, snooping on your Facebook and bad mouthing your dog. I'll tell you what, Tony, Violet is jumping on my bed. Violet is in good shape right now. Um, Thank God for prayers. Thank God for believing in Jesus Christ. Thank God for the crucifix and the Tom Cruise blanket that she had when she went into the hospital. I do believe it saved her life. And I just have to be a little bit more concerned with that part of her diet. And we will go on with that. Um, MM is a miserable, miserable person with way too much time on her hands. Remember, an ugly heart and idle hands is a deadly mix. Her obsession for six years has done more damage to her life than it could ever do to me. Right? But is she, she's not the first. Certainly not the last. Right? But anyway, um, I don't care about her. And I think that bothers her. Um, anyway, I kind of... Uh, let me just say hello to... Love you, miss you so much. Hello, hello, hello. Hi, hi, hi. Um, well, listen, I told everybody. I, who remembers when I said, oh, my God, Benny Keys slept with Candace. And Bullhorn Betty goes, on the trip, 
Oh, shut up, Molly. Go lightly. Shut up. See, this is misinformation. Yeah. I think I, I think I was right about that. <laughs> I kind of had that look. Yeah, so, hey. Are you getting my nails done? Yeah. Well, yeah, I got a facial yesterday and a massage. And today I do my nails and now she's about to paint my feet. Thank you so much. Because I got a vacation coming up. Anyway, that's all I just wanted to say, like in lieu of new information. That's why you're finding this out. I am incredibly disappointed with how many frauds and just disingenuous people. I just, I don't know how much money you could possibly be making in order to really sell yourself, uh, sell your soul to the devil. I mean, it's not worth it to me. Just not, it never was. But you pick your poison. Um, she's progressively gotten worse. Who, MM? Well, duh. More fixated and manic. Well, I hear that it's like more about Laura, Laura, Laura. Her life must be truly miserable. Of course it is. She's never gone anywhere. She's never done anything with her life. Nobody in her family likes her. She's got no friends. Listen, two of her former friends told me that her whole life <laughs> is her kid's sport. And she waits for the husband to go to work, kid get on the bus, and then she's on YouTube until right before they get home. Wash, rinse, repeat. Truly miserable that she spends so much time judging others. Well, the thing is, is she's... I don't know why she judges others, because she's got a lot of issues. But the thing is, is she, she's not normal. And she's not respected. And... There's nothing really to her. And the thing is, is what could I or you or anyone else? There's nothing Laura can do to her that's going to hurt her any worse than her life already is. That's really what it is. Hey, Cork. My favorite YouTuber. Eh, not anymore. I've seen her. Uh, I don't even care. About, don't even get it. I don't even care. She's just going over my live streams. Yeah, because she's so vested in me and my dog. I knew people were jealous of my dog. I'm not dumb. I'm not stupid. But yeah. Always looking through my Instagram. She's a weird, weird person. She looks at like... She looks at Instagrams of other women who are just housewives in the suburbs. <laughs> Whereas, like, I would be, like, scoping out Michael ja uh, Janet Jackson's profile on Instagram. You know what I'm saying? Like, too much of an interest. And I've been gone for a year from YouTube. Oh, my God. Get some help. She's, no, she's, she's just scary. But that's the thing. Idle hands, ugly heart, deadly mix. Karma's been handing it to her for a while. She never once did anything in six years. And I have to say, that is the saddest thing I've ever heard. Her dog is always being screamed at and locked away. Doesn't she have like a gigantic rescue dog? She's not a good dog mom. Whatever. I don't, I'm not going to talk anything about her dog. I'm sure her dog is wonderful. Anyway, I'm going to consider um, going live later on Facebook. A bit tired from all this beautifying myself. But guess what? Nine days and counting, I'm going to be dropping the picture of a lifetime. Thank you. Bye, guys.